It lays the predicate and the foundation for the development of a weather satellite that will permit man to determine the world's cloud layer and ultimately to control the weather. And he who controls the weather will control the world. Engineering Earth. Deluge, drought, and devastation. From Forbes.com, one in a thousand year weather event as extreme rain and floods ravage Northeast. From AccuWeather.com, state of emergency declarations issued in New York State as deadly flooding strikes Northeast. Floods, heat, smoke. That message from the New York Times. From the Washington Post, floods, fires, and deadly heat are the alarm bells of a planet on the brink. No. No, not on the brink. Free falling into the abyss. We're far past the breaking point. The question that remains is this. Will anyone survive what's coming? From CNN.com. Still reeling from catastrophic flooding, Vermont braces for another round of rain. The CNN report stated floodwaters were, quote, filled with oil, gas, sewage, chemicals, and more. From ABC. Hours of heavy rain creates flash flood emergency in East Mississippi. From AP News, people rescued from cars and homes as rapid rainfall causes flash flooding in central Mississippi. These examples are only a few from around the U.S. There are many more, but you get the point. Similar deluges are taking place around the world, and U.S. televised matrix media isn't showing us any of it. CNN, Fox, MSNBC... Televised so-called news is nothing more than a constant circular streaming of scripted political distract, divide, and polarize theater. Question, what will it take to awaken more of the population from their power structure programmed normalcy bias? Because we're almost out of time. More flooding from the UK Telegraph. Doomsday flooding in India. From that report, the Indian subcontinent is currently grappling with a devastating flooding disaster. As the crisis unfolds, thousands of lives hang in the balance and the struggle for survival intensifies. From MashrikTV.pk, catastrophic flooding rages in India. Thousands struggle to survive as rivers burst their banks. We see none of this on U.S. Matrix Media TV so-called news. From Reuters.com. China evacuates 40,000 people from floods. More rain expected, sounds like Vermont. From the Japan Times, 480,000 told to evacuate as record rainfall hits southwestern Japan. From the UK Guardian, heaviest rain ever causes deadly floods and landslides in Japan. From CBS News, intense monsoon rains lash Pakistan with flooding and landslides. For the record, Pakistan is the world's fifth largest population, and they had flooding two years ago that covered a third of their country. From the UK Guardian, floods followed by earthquake heap more trauma on Haiti. Haiti has been brutalized by Western powers for decades. Now let's add this from MSN.com. Torrential downpours lead to catastrophic flooding in Spain. From that report, torrential downpours, large hail, and gusty winds targeted Spain's northeast. Roadways turned into raging rivers in a matter of minutes after a series of storms dumped excessive rainfall amounts, in some cases within 10 minutes. Extreme hail events are now the norm. The climate engineers are almost always further fueling wind with such events. How? By atmospheric pressure zone manipulation via aerosol spraying dispersions and extremely powerful frequency transmissions from entire networks of installations that perform this function. Not science fiction, science fact. These frequency transmissions are used to manipulate the aerosol saturated air masses, electrically conductive aerosols. By manipulating those aerosols, you manipulate the air masses. And about the extreme hail and the now past chemically nucleated winter weather in the U.S. West, search the Engineering Winter section on the homepage of geoengineeringwatch.org. Chemical ice nucleation cloud seeding operations are wreaking havoc as the weather makers desperately and toxically try to engineer short-term surface cooldowns on a planet that's spiraling into total meltdown with climate engineering further fueling the overall fire. On the opposite end of the climate intervention operations spectrum, all too often, within the borders of a single country, we have, again, the opposite extreme. From Bloomberg.com, 
Extreme drought is wreaking havoc on daily life in Spain. Soaring temperatures and an unusual lack of rain is touching virtually all aspects of daily life, except in those regions of Spain that have just been deluged with catastrophic flooding. From the Texas Tribune, extreme heat is threatening corn in South Texas, and that's not the only location where corn is being threatened and crops across the globe are collapsing. In some countries, in Asia, they're literally planting in the middle of the night because it's too hot in the daytime. And for those that don't know, photosynthesis stops at 104 degrees. Tapers down to that point, stops at 104 degrees, and that's not even taking into account what the now unprecedented UV radiation is doing to crops, forests, plankton, and us. More on that shortly. Stay tuned. From Yahoo.com, North Texas under severe drought condition. Perhaps a trip to a Texas beach for a swim would make it all better. Not so much. From Houston Public Media, this. Nearly all Texas beaches contaminated with bacterial pathogens dangerous to swimmers, report says. Again, that's from Houston Public Media. From Yahoo News, Kansas drought is getting worse. Mentioned that a moment ago. Corn crops and other crops, not just in Kansas. This is just one more example. From NBC News, drought and extreme heat burn through farmers' margin for error, and it's only July. This is absolutely just the beginning. We have painted ourselves into an unimaginably dark corner, and so many in the general population pretending, as they've been programmed to do, that if you just ignore it long enough, it will all magically go away. We'll see how that works out. From climatenews.com, Europe weather, Spain, Italy, and Greece to swelter in 40 degrees C heat as long-lasting heat wave grips continent. Next from CNN, Italy swelters under deadly Cerberus heat wave, which could break European temperature records. What is Cerberus? It's the theatrical name given to this heat wave. Just as Weather Channel has done with winter storms, in addition to cyclones, which have been named for a long time, this theaterizes the weather event. It gives it more drama, more of an impression on the public, and that's exactly why they name these events. And here's an example from AP News. A heat wave named Cerberus has Southern Europe in its jaws, and it's only going to get worse. Theater. Not the event itself, which is all too real, but the way it's packaged for the public to create maximum impression. Next, new from politico.com. Dizzying death toll of European heat reveals adaptation shortcomings. About that headline, the term shortcomings is a gross understatement. For the record, if the human race remains on the current course, there will be no adaptation. There will be no human race, and we will likely take the entire web of life down with us. The epitome of human insanity is the use of weather as a weapon, and of course, nuclear everything. Welcome to the asylum. From the UK Independent, land surface temperatures in Spain surpass 60 degrees C. That's about 140 degrees Fahrenheit, as deadly heat wave sweeps Europe. From Euronews.com, France's nuclear power stations to limit energy output due to high river temperatures. Guess what? When the water gets too hot, It no longer cools the reactors. What kind of a combination of idiocy is that? Just like putting nuclear reactors at sea level that are now beginning to swamp. Fukushima being a prime example of what happens when there's a tidal wave and you have a nuclear power plant at sea level. Triple nuclear meltdown, no technology to fix it, no end in sight, and the vast majority of Americans thinks it's all better now. Anything but... And now we have the release of radioactive water into the Pacific. And it's not just the Pacific because it's one world ocean. It's all connected. And Americans have no clue while they're watching political stupidity on every single major network channel. From AccuWeather, Death Valley could approach 130 degrees Fahrenheit as heat intensifies over southwest. It will likely be much warmer than that. But officially, they will underreport the temperatures. Wait, does that mean I'm an Al Gore or a John Kerry fan? Absolutely not. But just because disaster capitalists profit from unfolding catastrophe doesn't mean the catastrophe isn't real. Just ask those that have survived wars, or perhaps in the next life, 
those who didn't survive. The human race as a whole has laid waste to the planet in the geologic blink of an eye. The reckoning is here. There's no place to hide. The California rain apocalypse and snowmageddon contaminated precipitation events from last winter have now, as expected, morphed into extreme heat, extremely low humidity levels, and dying forests that are now primed for total incineration. See, wildfires serve geoengineering agenda to learn more on that subject. From phys.org, yes, California bakes. Gavin Newsom launches campaign to warn of the dangers of extreme heat. Gavin Newsom, who I stated many times in this broadcast, I had private meetings with Newsom at the Capitol with his top aide. He absolutely knows about climate engineering, was presented data he didn't refute because he couldn't refute it. And he plays along still because that's his part in the play, to toe the line for those in power. From the UK Guardian, Canada faces long, tough summer of wildfires with even hotter temperatures in store. The 2023 fire season is and will continue to be record-breaking in a number of ways. Part of the plan. Again, search and view wildfires serve geoengineering agenda. Why would those in power want to incinerate forests as a last-ditch desperate effort? Because it masks temporarily some of the warming on the planet at the cost of destroying what's left of Earth's life support systems. Don't think they could be that desperate? Please search the report I just mentioned. Within it, there are screenshots of peer-reviewed science study that advocates for the burning of forests for exactly that purpose, to provide temporary cooling of wider regions with highly toxic smoke canopies that are, by the way, pushed down to the surface and held there with manipulated atmospheric pressure zones, exactly what ionosphere heaters do, heat upper layers of the atmosphere like the ionosphere, which pushes the atmosphere up and down, the downward push can force that toxic smoke canopy down on the ground and hold it there so the maximum number of population gets to breathe it every single day. On that note, from this UK Guardian article, this excerpt, it's really the fine particles that get deep into our lungs and bloodstream. Those are the ones we're most concerned with in terms of health risk. Again, all this from the UK Guardian article. They continue, there are gases and particles and water vapor that can cause chest pains, coughs, shortness of breath, and other symptoms. Here's a question. What else is being dispersed into the smoke canopies from above? And for the record, the long-term consequences of breathing this toxic brew are unimaginably worse than any of the symptoms the CNN report just mentioned. Also for the record, geoengineeringwatch.org recorded with film footage, time-lapse film footage, blanket geoengineering aerosol spraying directly on top of the Paradise Fire smoke canopy. What's that about? It is certainly not benevolent. And then we have all the reports of the chemical smelling smoke, plastic smelling smoke, and we have official agencies trying to excuse that away as just being something natural when it's anything but. Next up from CBS News, continued propagation of total deception that is far less than even a half truth. Here's the headline. A century of fire suppression is worsening wildfires and hurting forests. Let's stop there. And in fact, I don't know where to start on this widely accepted as truth lie. And that's exactly what it is. And I know about this firsthand. I have done extensive forest thinning work, working with state and federal agencies, done six habitat restoration forest thinning operations, three of them working directly with state agencies, state of California and CAL FIRE, and three with USDA, federal agencies. Here's the bottom line about the global incinerations that are off the scale. Climate engineering is the core causal factor. First, about the forests and their mismanagement. It starts with completely destructive logging practices that in years past have taken the entire canopy off the forest, taken all the good trees out of the forest, all the good seed trees, and left the genetically inferior trees and allowed the understory of fuel to overgrow those trees. That's the start of the mismanaged forests. Next, and most important of all, climate engineering has more than any other factor, fueled the incinerations around the globe. It has completely derailed the hydrological cycle. Now we have spans without rain in boreal forests that can be 
six to nine months, where I live in Northern California, when I moved here in the year 2001, the rain stopped at the end of May, start of June, and started again in September. Now there can be six, eight, nine months between rains. We had winter of 2022 from the end of 2021, December, all the way to April 2022, we had zero rain all winter long, zero. That is a direct result of climate engineering operations, and we can see that on satellite imagery. We're not guessing. Further, climate engineering operations contaminating precipitation. That kills soil microbiome. That kills root systems. That weakens the trees. That allows the beetles to take over and do their part, which is what all official agencies blame everything on. It's just the beetles, or so they would like us to believe. Next, we have the incredibly intense UV radiation. Climate engineering, the single greatest factor destroying the ozone layer, releasing not just extreme amounts of UVB radiation onto forest foliage, but also UVC radiation, a DNA damaging spectrum of radiation that causes the trees and the foliage to shut their stomata, their respiratory ports. They don't breathe. They don't absorb carbon. They don't release oxygen. They are dying slowly and surely. We have the incendiary dust that climate engineering elements are. That's exactly what they are. In the case of aluminum nanoparticles, that's actually used in thermite, a demolition material. That's how incendiary that dust is. Now we have more dry lightning because these electrically conductive particles are ionizing the atmosphere, making it more electrically conductive and generating more static buildup of electricity, thus more dry lightning because these particles are also desiccants. They dry up much of the atmospheric moisture depending on what they're seeding at any given time. All of these conditions combine to make climate engineering operations the single greatest factor with the global incinerations. And let's look at what has happened in Siberia over a decade-long period, I believe from 2005 to 2015. In regions of Siberia that have never been touched by human hands, ever, the burn rate increased a thousand percent, ten times worse Is that just bad management in forests that have never been touched at all? Official agencies are lying to us across the board on a scale that can scarcely be comprehended. And about the forest, the forest is my cathedral. That is where I feel most connected to my maker. That's where I toiled in solitude for years, restoring habitat that was decimated from the loot, plunder, pillage, and pollute logging practices But I couldn't stay there in good conscience knowing what was occurring in the skies above and knowing that it would completely negate all my years of toil and that it would alter the very web of life on the planet, which it has done. I had to engage in this battle going back now 20 years. I had to leave my work in solitude in the forest and I wanted to stay there for the rest of my days to plant trees, to restore what had been damaged from human activity, but my post was not there. It's here, and I intend to remain at my post until the insanity in our skies is exposed and the official lies with it. Climate engineering operations are the most foundational factor fueling the unprecedented wildfires. Search the engineering wildfires section on the homepage of geoengineeringwatch.org to learn what most would rather not know. Perhaps we can cool off by taking a vacation in Florida or not. This headline, ocean temperatures hit hot tub levels in southern Florida, pushing 100 degrees. More in a moment. From CNN, a perfect storm is unfolding this summer, and it's supercharging the weather, scientists say. What part of the supercharging the weather equation will official sources and matrix media never, ever disclose? the climate engineering, weather warfare part of the equation. For the record, as I've stated so many times, and this is core, this is critical to any discussion on this issue, there is no legitimate dialogue or discussion on weather or climate anything from any perspective without first and foremost acknowledging and including the climate engineering element in the equation, which has derailed all of Earth's former cycles and systems. All of them. Does that mean I'm saying that no other human activity is a part of this equation? No. 
I'm absolutely not saying that. It's not a this or that equation. It's a this and that equation. Every single form of human activity that affects the energy balance of the planet is a part of the problem. That is a form of geoengineering, intended or not. All of it is detrimental to our near-term survival on the planet. You can't go through 100 million barrels of carbon fuel a day and not expect to have an effect on the planet. You can't pave the planet, cut down the forest, poison the oceans, and not have an effect on the planet. But climate engineering, the intentional intervention in the climate system, the most detrimental of all. And we face other factors as well. Again, nuclear everything. The human race has painted itself into an incredibly dark corner on that front. Let's move on from newdaily.com. Here's the headline from this week. Time is running out. Experts warning after record seven-day temperatures. This record is actually much more dire than what this headline would indicate, and I'll get to that in a moment. But first, this question. Have the so-called experts finally summoned the courage to admit to the global climate engineering factor in this equation? Of course not. From this report, you have places where it's not raining like in Texas, and then you have Vermont, which just experienced flooding never seen before. The report then says, what climate change seems to be doing is intensifying the water cycle. So places that are normally dry are getting drier. Places that are normally wet get wetter. And the report states, we're heading for even more extremes over the next decades. First, this report from NewDaily.com is total deception due to the total emission of the climate engineering elephant in this equation. And next, any statement of what's going to happen over the next decades is meaningless because we won't make it that far on the current course, nowhere near. With that in mind, let's add this from the report. According to an international think tank, there could be as many as 1.2 billion climate refugees by 2050. This, the report says, will contribute to global instability in unpredictable ways. No, it's actually very predictable. Mad Max on steroids, if we were to make it that far, which we won't. It's a mathematical and statistical certainty that we can't make it anywhere near that far on the current trajectory. We've lost 80 to 90 percent of the insect populations right now. We've lost 70 to 80 percent of our wildlife populations in the last half century alone. Plankton collapsing, oceans collapsing, climate collapsing, crops collapsing, weather warfare raging in our skies. The dates that Reports like this throughout are completely meaningless. Again, we will never make it that far. And those that still refuse to believe this is possible, wait in the coming weeks and months and see if you still believe that. From DWTV in Germany, UN says climate may be, quote, out of control as heat records fall. From that report, the news comes as the EU's Climate Monitoring Service has now officially stated that the Earth had experienced its hottest June on record last month. And that's in spite of falsifying official high temperatures to the downside and in spite of chemical ice nucleation cloud seeding operations skewing the temperature data by creating short-term highly toxic cool downs. To all those that are still pretending that such dire news is just, quote, climate alarmism, time to wake up. And for the record, most of the same people that use the climate alarmism statement also deny the shockingly apparent climate engineering atrocities, again, that are raging in our skies. If you're not concerned to the core about the unfolding planetary meltdown, something's wrong. Your eyes are wide shut. Again, wildlife populations are crashing. Plankton populations the same, global fisheries are imploding, oceans are superheating, oxygen levels in the atmosphere and the seas are plummeting, insect populations, as already mentioned, crashing, terrestrial and aquatic. If you're not concerned to the core about all of this, and above it all the raging weather warfare operations that all but the clinically blind can see, if they chose to, again, eyes wide shut. Anyone that's still clinging to the it's just alarmism, mindless matrix manufactured mantra of baffling denial, please, please wake up while you can still make a difference. Time is not on our side. As previously stated, the ozone layer is disintegrating. Climate engineering aerosols and associated frequency transmissions, core of the ozone layer collapse, existential threat. Rapidly increasing ionizing radiation in the atmosphere is further fueling ozone layer collapse when more power plants go into meltdown mode and if and when any level of nuclear weapon detonations occur 
the increase in atmospheric ionizing radiation will strip away what remains of Earth's absolutely miraculous atmospheric layers. Game over for all life on Earth. On that note of good cheer, moving on from grist.org. This headline from this week, How Climate Change Drives Hotter, More Frequent Heat Waves. Let's correct that title and include how jet spray geoengineering desiccant particles in the ionosphere heater installations do exactly the same. The so-called climate science community has completely betrayed the human race and the entire web of life by their participation in this mass deception, this mass denial of the climate engineering elephant in the sky. And the public has participated in this deception and this near-term self-annihilation equation that we find ourselves in because they are willing to go along with what they've been programmed to accept. That you don't question the so-called experts. The matrix, paid, trained, programmed so-called experts. From DesertNews.com, renowned climate scientist says what U.S. should do to stop warming. They're talking about James Hansen, a prominent climate scientist that, like so many of his colleagues, has so far lacked the courage to tell the truth about the ongoing climate engineering operations. Next, new from ScientificAmerican.com, supercomputer will help decide whether to block the sun. Over 75 years of global climate intervention operations and the world is still pretending it's just a proposal. The cover-up of the fact that the global climate intervention operations may have already sealed our collective fate. From this report, a new supercomputer is helping climate scientists determine whether injecting human-made sun-blocking aerosols into the stratosphere would also alter thunderstorms and rainfall. That Last question is comparable to asking whether or not driving your car off the edge of a cliff would disrupt your road trip. Of course. And we need a team of scientists to come to these conclusions. The report continues, the new supercomputer for climate research will help scientists study the effects of solar geoengineering, a controversial idea, they say, for cooling the planet by redirecting the sun's rays. They say, quote, it could disrupt rainfall patterns. At this point in time, the so-called science community is nothing more than a tool of total deception and tyranny. A product of the puppet masters that pull their strings, that provide their paychecks and pensions. With that in mind, let's add this follow-up report. From ScienceTimes.org, Biden opens doors to geoengineering atmospheric chemical altering plan to block sunlight to limit global warming. How's that working out so far after 75 years and all the record temperatures we've had in even the last week? Record shattering temperatures that based on paleo data may be the hottest it's been in 100,000 years or more. From this report, proposals come with their own severe ramifications. These ramifications include affected weather patterns and food supplies. Yeah, crushing crops. That's exactly what they're doing around the globe. We have a systematic targeting of agricultural regions with flash drought, flash flood, flash hail, flash freeze. As such, this could greatly impact geopolitics, the report says, biodiversity and overall health. And none of these proposals, none of them ever mentions, by the way, we will all get to inhale and absorb everything that's sprayed into the atmosphere. They never even mention that fact. And the public all too willing to ignore that fact along with them. From the UK Guardian, the planet heats the world, economy cools. The real global recession is ecological. How many times have I tried to sound that alarm on this report over how many years? There is no economy without a functional environment. None. Nature has historically provided 75% of all global GDP for free. No more. Party's over. Next headline. Numerous sources. Giant dust cloud from the Sahara could reach Florida and southern U.S. states. And we're already being told there's three more dust clouds coming. And the first one has reached Florida. Question, what else is in those clouds? Just like the smoke canopies that are pushed down and held on the surface, all of this provides cover for those in power, for the climate engineers that obey them, and for populations that want to believe what they're told, that want to believe it's just smoke, that want to believe it's just a dust cloud from the Sahara. When will people wake up? and look at the wider horizon through a clear lens. 
And for the record, I am absolutely not speaking to those who are already awake and doing everything they can given their individual circumstances and to each and every one of you. My deepest undying gratitude, we march in this battle together. It is an honor to stand with you in this fight for all that matters, for all that we hold dear. Moving on from phys.org, air pollution particles may be contributing to dramatic drop in global insect numbers. From this report, the impact of air pollution on insect health and reproduction is greater than previously understood and could be contributing to the global declines in insect populations, including in remote wilderness areas. New research shows how come geoengineeringwatch.org has known and stated this on the record now since 2012, 11 years, and now the so-called Climate science and science community in general is just now beginning to catch up. They're only starting to tell the truth because they can no longer hide it. And it's not just the nanoparticles of heavy metals that are wreaking havoc on insect populations, soil microbiome, and everything from the clouds to the ground. It's also the extremely intense UV radiation that is doing untold damage to every form of life. None of this being disclosed. And in regard to the bees, as I've stated in so many previous broadcasts, please search bees aluminum and you'll find peer-reviewed science study to prove that bees are dying of massive aluminum exposure, even in wilderness areas. Again, aluminum being a primary element named in climate engineering patents and showing up in precipitation tests all over the world. Loot, plunder, pillage, and pollute until nothing is left. For the record, industrialized militarized society is, and always has been, joined at the hip with the extraction industry. From ctvnews.ca, there are thousands of tons of methane emissions being released by melting glaciers. Methane not just coming from the carbon refining industry, but thawing and releasing deposits in tundra and the seabed now hold life on earth in the balance. Please search Siberian methane craters, look at those images, and you'll understand the gravity of what I'm trying to convey. From Climate Action Australia, unprecedented ocean temperatures, quote, much higher than anything the models predicted, end quote, climate expert warns. The report states spiking ocean temperatures can also impact fisheries. South Florida ocean temperatures are in the 92 to 95 degree range. Some of Florida's ocean temperatures, the report states, have hit 97 degrees pushing 100, as I stated at the beginning of this broadcast. If that doesn't alarm you to the core, it should. More in a moment on that superheating seas subject and the existential threat of Canfield Ocean scenario. New from the UK Guardian, world's oceans changing color due to climate breakdown studies suggest the chemistry of the oceans and the atmosphere are both changing radically and not for the better. From the Atlantic.com, boiling the ocean, They state in this report, between record-setting heat and warming ocean water, this summer feels like the start of an unsettling new era. Indeed it is. The Atlantic.com report continues with this. Did you think it would all happen this fast? Question mark. The heat domes, how many times have I brought that up in this broadcast? The thousand-year floods, the apocalyptic wildfires, that horrific orange sky. This summer's convergence of extreme events makes it feel like we're living in a CGI-laden disaster movie. But, the report says, those epic blockbusters all offer the same material comfort, an ending. What we're experiencing is different. The Atlantic.com report was correct, at least on that statement. From the Washington Post, experts reverse early forecast. Now call for active hurricane season. They can change the script at will. Keep that in mind. U.S. military began to manipulate hurricanes in 1947 with Project Cirrus. How far have they come since then? They can and are steering these storms with aerosol, saturation of the atmosphere, and frequency transmissions. Please, please search geoengineeringwatch.org hurricanes and look at all our reports on the steering of these storms. This is not speculation. Look at the data in these reports. Look at the captures of the frequency transmissions that are manipulating the storms in real time. Please, look at the information, then make up your mind. From the UK Guardian, the biggest gold rush in history is about to start in the deep sea, leaving total devastation in its wake. Is there anything left to devastate? 
All of us should be deep. The alarm reports is the environmental impact of deep sea mining could be catastrophic. No, could be. There's no could be. If you jump off a hundred story building with no parachute, it's not that you could be hurt. You will be hurt if you live at all. Massive machines, they say, will scour the ocean bed to pick up polymetallic nodules, destroying everything in their path and creating sediment plumes that can suffocate coral reefs and other organisms hundreds of miles from the mining site. Mining will damage the ocean's ability to act as a carbon sink. It's already done in that department because the plankton are dying and collapsing. Accelerating global warming, the report says, and new research suggests the polymetallic nodules could contain radioactive substances endangering human health. Do we think any of these agencies are really concerned about human health when they claim to be curing diseases while they're actually causing them from every conceivable direction? Total asylum, planetary asylum. Pressing on, too many headlines to cover. I'll do my best in the time allotted on this live on-air broadcast from obp.org. Study shows Oregon Coast gray whales consume millions of harmful bits of plastic and clothing. They don't have anything else to eat. Fisheries are completely collapsing along the U.S. West Coast, especially, have been shut down for a number of years, depending on the type of fishery, but they're all collapsing. If the oceans die, we die. About the chemical ice nucleation flash freezes, I have two headlines to cover, one from Australia, one from Africa. But first in regard to a lead up to that and how this is done, let's start with this. From ITV.com, global warming is behind torrential downpours causing devastation worldwide, experts warn. From the report, a number of factors are intensifying the water cycle, but one of them is most important, and that's that warming temperatures raise the upper limit on the amount of moisture in the air. Now, I've been over that on this broadcast for many years. The atmosphere holds 7% more moisture for every degree C of warming. Based on unfiltered frontline data, we appear to be past 3.5 degrees C right now. That means that it must rain more on a warming planet, more overall. And it is obviously deluging in many places, but there is protracted drought in many other regions. In fact, there is much more protracted drought than the laws of physics say there should be. How are they drying up that rain and what is the effect? When you use endothermic reacting materials seeded into clouds and ice nucleating materials, which causes the massive hail in places, causes the ice balls, search ice balls, Lake Michigan, look at some of those pictures, and you create a cold, dense layer of air, an unnatural layer that sinks to the surface because it's heavier, because it's cold, it's more dense, and you create a flash cool down, and they sensationalize those headlines. So here's one from CNN from this week. South Africans abuzz after first snowfall in over a decade. Don't eat that snow, and I don't say that lightly. From news.com.eu, widespread frost forecast for eastern parts of Australia as cold snap continues. The report says Aussies can expect to wake up to more frosty mornings as the country grapples with widespread cold snap. And this is after, of course, total incinerating temperatures, wildfires burning that country to the ground. And how soon so many forget if they have one engineered cold snap, even if it's putting frost on top of dead, burnt trees, they forget all about how hellish previous years have been. Those in power know that, and that's a core part of climate engineering. To mask the damage done for as long as possible while inflicting even more damage in the process, the true definition of insanity. It's up to each of us, all of us, to constantly re-examine every conclusion we hold, everything we thought was so, in regard to the state of the planet, of the climate, of the melting ice. Believe what you can see with your own eyes. Start with the documentary online, Chasing Ice. Look at the film footage. It's shocking and it's much worse now. Much worse when that film was made. Having understandable disdain for people like Al Gore and John Kerry isn't a basis for building a conclusion that climate collapse warnings are just, quote, alarmism. Remember that. Disaster capitalist doesn't mean the disaster isn't real. On that note, this follow-up report mentioned earlier in this broadcast from NewScientist.com, the past week, referring to the first week of July, was the hottest ever recorded on Earth. The report says the past seven days were, at minimum, the hottest since instrument records began in the 1850s. Paleo data indicates far worse, though. That conclusion, the hottest span of heat on Earth for as much as the last 100,000 years. And I'll say again, 
many in places like California might claim that this couldn't be true because June wasn't so warm where they were. But the world is far bigger than California. So for the record, June 2023 was the warmest June globally by a large margin since record keeping began. And that's in spite of data falsification of temperatures to the downside. From ABC Australia, why are so many climate records breaking all at once? It's called abrupt climate collapse. Hell on earth is already unfolding. Climate engineering operations are further fueling that fire. You're listening to the weekly installment of Global Alert News, the bad news broadcast. Installment number 414, July 15th, 2023. This is Dane Wigington, your host. Global Alert News is brought to you by geoengineeringwatch.org, the largest and most visited website in the world on the subject of climate intervention operations known as geoengineering. The commercial-free, non-political Global Alert News Hour is now broadcast on 25 AM and FM stations throughout the country. All recent recordings of this broadcast can be found on the homepage of geoengineeringwatch.org under the recent column. Geoengineering Watch wishes to express our deepest gratitude to those that have helped us to expand our reach and thus our voice in this desperate last hour effort to sound the alarm. If you're on our email list, please put us on your email contact book so that our mail outs don't go to the spam files. Please help us to share the groundbreaking documentary, The Dimming, which fully exposes the climate engineering atrocities. The best way to share is by circulating the direct link to the dimming by email directly from the homepage of geoengineeringwatch.org. Sharing directly helps us to overcome social media censorship. When viewing our YouTube of the dimming or Global Alert News or any other Geoengineering Watch video on YouTube, please subscribe, share, and comment, all of which helps us to circulate critically important data to a much wider audience. Geoengineering Watch awareness raising materials can be found on our homepage. Our only goal is to provide activists what they need to move this fight forward. There's very high quality printed materials with shocking images. A picture's worth a thousand words as the proverb goes. We now have Geoengineering Watch hoodies and shirts. High quality four color images on both sides. The images of a military tanker descending down over the planet and spraying. A dimming sun is on the background with this caption, Stop Climate Engineering, Investigate and below that geoengineeringwatch.org. Images of these shirts are on the homepage. Scannable business cards, bumper stickers, all effective tools to help strike up a conversation on the climate engineering issue. This battle is a team effort. If we can awaken the masses, we could yet alter the equation. We would cause a shockwave around the world. My deepest gratitude to all those who are steadfastly committed to this must-win fight for all that matters. Stay tuned for input on how you can make your voice heard. Moving on from Mashable.com, scientists know why today's rains are so terrible. They say atmospheric scientists know why. When air temperatures are warmer, stated this before the break, the atmosphere can naturally hold more water vapor. Heat makes water molecules evaporate into water vapor, meaning there's more water in the air, particularly in many humid or rainy regions. Consequently, this boosts the odds of potential storms like thunderstorms, mid-latitude cyclones, atmospheric rivers, or hurricanes, deluging places with more water. But what doesn't this report state? That there is actually much more protracted drought on planet Earth now than the laws of physics say there should be or even could be with the rapidly warming temperatures. And that means that there's a factor in this equation that we're not being told about. And that factor is climate intervention operations, a.k.a. weather warfare. With that in mind, moving on from tomsdispatch.com. Next headline, Iraq's climate crisis. From that report, America's war for oil and the great Mesopotamian dust bowl. Iraqi posts on social media, the report says, now regularly observe in horror at some locations along the formerly mighty Tigris and Euphrates rivers. If you stand on the riverbanks, you can see through to the riverbeds. You can even, Iraqis report, ford them on foot, crossing formerly mighty rivers on foot. Why are resource-rich countries being targeted? That blank's not hard to fill in, is it? Again, a flashback to 1962, former U.S. President Lyndon Johnson stating on the record, it's the beginning of every single weekly global alert news broadcast, a film of Lyndon Johnson stating on the record that we had the power to control the world's cloud layer then, and quote, he who controls the weather controls the world. So let's look at Iraq that I've 
mentioned so many times on so many broadcasts that former NATO Supreme Commander General Wesley Clark was given a list of Middle Eastern countries that were to be targeted immediately after the new Pearl Harbor event of 9-11, which galvanized American populations into complete support of whatever the military industrial complex wanted to do. How convenient. And that list of Middle Eastern countries, which included, of course, Iraq, all of those countries were subsequently subjected to a once in 1,000 year drought. And we had the leaders of those countries, in the case of Iran, at the floor of the UN, stating that NATO was cutting off their precipitation, thus destabilizing their food supplies, thus destabilizing their populations, thus making them easier to control. Not hard to connect these dots. Climate engineering, the crown jewel of the military industrial complex, the weapon with which they can and are bringing populations to their knees without those populations ever even knowing they're under assault. And that includes the U.S. population. Moving on, more headlines of meltdown from NBC News. U.S. Southwest faces record-breaking heat as global temperatures soar. From MSN.com, California and Arizona brace for a, quote, historic heat wave with possible temperatures of over 120 degrees. On that report, Death Valley may break 130 degrees by Sunday. That would be the hottest temperature on Earth this century. And if that ends up being the official high temperature, the unfiltered readings will almost certainly be higher still. For decades, official temperatures have been routinely underreported, just as is the case with official UV readings, which are grossly underreported, criminally so. On the next broadcast, I will explain that in greater detail. But bottom line, UV readings only measuring UVA, half the UVB spectrum, and none of the UVC spectrum, none. Thus, completely unreported. The disintegrating ozone layer is an extinction level event by itself, near term extinction level event. Question How many are still clinging to the delusion that the human race can, quote, adapt to what's coming? Good luck with that. Then there's this oxymoron statement of stupidity, quote, sustainable development, end quote. Finite planet, finite resources, the low-hanging fruit has long since been plundered, and now industrialized, militarized, so-called society is squeezing the last breaths of life out of a dying planet. And even now, how many are clinging to the, quote, sustainable development mantra of total delusion? Here's a not-so-fun fact on this subject. In the year 1900, one barrel of oil provided enough energy to get 100 more barrels out of the ground. Now, due to rapidly dwindling and much harder to recover hydrocarbon reserves, today, one barrel of oil is needed to recover five more. That's a 95% decline and still dropping. On the subject of dropping levels, from Newsweek, Lake Powell water levels threatened by heat wave. From that report, the heat wave bringing triple digit temperatures and dry weather to the southwest could douse hopes that the lakes are recovering. Also from Newsweek, this, have Lake Mead water levels stopped rising? How many thought this problem was over now? Not so much. Lake Mead water levels still down 170 feet, and that doesn't bode well for what's coming. Next headline from the Washington Post, extreme heat wave bound for Phoenix and Southwest could be worst ever. Report says it's already hot and set to get much worse. Numerous heat records are at risk. From the Atlantic.com, when will the Southwest become unlivable? Question mark. Here's the short answer. Very soon. And the rest of the planet soon after. Short of an increasingly unlikely course correction by the human race, the end draws near. An unpleasant truth that precious few are willing to face. The scheduled temperatures are all over the board from hour to hour. The beginning of this week, the scheduled weather for Redding, California went from a high this weekend of 111 to suddenly 118, and then it dropped back down to 112, and now it's back up to 115. The script changes literally hour to hour. From levernews.com, remaining calm about climate change will kill us, the report says. And let's add this, remaining calm about climate engineering aka weather warfare, will do the same. Both factors have long since combined to hurl us all over the edge of the abyss. Buckle up, because what's coming will make what is seem like a Club Med vacation. Before I run out of time on this broadcast, let's blaze through some headlines. Please help me connect these dots. From sciencealert.com, underground climate change threatens to destabilize buildings. And they're not just talking about big city skyscrapers at lower latitudes, but ongoing crises for all buildings at high elevation or northern latitudes. Here's a few example headlines. 
BBC, The Fragile Future of Roads and Buildings Built on Permafrost, Scientific American, Buildings Crumble at High Altitudes in the Alps as Permafrost Thaws. From PBS, Driven by Climate Change, Thawing Permafrost is Radically Changing the Arctic Landscape. From Bloomberg, Melting Permafrost and the Housing Crisis in the Arctic, Houses are Crumbling and Collapsing. From Grist.org, Thawing Alaskan Permafrost Threatens Local Communities. From the Siberian Times, Arctic permafrost thaw will cost billions in infrastructures. It's going to cost a lot more than that when the methane that's frozen there thaws and enters the atmosphere. It's called Venus Syndrome. From Newsweek, Himalayan plateau is about to fall apart due to thawing. And here's the final report from CBC Science in Canada. Permafrost is thawing in the Arctic so fast that scientists are losing their equipment. Instead of a few centimeters of thaw a year, the report says several meters of soil can destabilize within days. And we're constantly told that the thawing permafrost is releasing formerly frozen pathogens that now pose a threat to all of us. And never mind the over 400 biolabs all over the world whose business it is to create and experiment with such pathogens. No, the constant bombardment of new and different pathogens couldn't have anything to do with those biolabs, or so we're told. On that note, new from Reuters.com, surging bird flu outbreaks raise human infection risk, UN agencies warn. I wonder what's next. In regard to my reporting of the planetary meltdown, including the polar regions, which can be verified by inarguable film footage, I still get messages like this, and I am quoting word for word, came in last week. Why don't you address the record high amounts of snowpack the Earth has seen lately? Question mark. Why is it that you keep talking about global warming if the long-term data clearly shows that we are headed for a glaciation period? Question mark. The world is getting colder, Dane, not hotter. What world is this person living in? It's not this world, certainly. Those that push narratives like this are not committed to the fight to expose and halt climate engineering. They're committed to their own ideology. And narratives like this do great harm to the effort to expose and halt climate engineering when they deny the very aspects of climate engineering like chemical ice nucleation that were the core causal factor for this buildup of toxic chemically nucleated snow, they are towing the exact narrative that the power structure and the climate engineers want. That's why they create these sensationalized events. So how do you claim to be fighting climate engineering and denying it at the same time? How does that work exactly? Please tell me because I can't figure that one out. The planet isn't just warming. It's in an abrupt climate collapse. It's in total meltdown with climate intervention operations further fueling that fire. Here's a few last headlines on that front from ABC News. Antarctic ice deficit grows to size of Western Australia as 2023 shatters more climate records. From CNBC, Antarctic ice has been at record low levels for months. The Arctic, for the record, is the same. Ocean temperatures are soaring as are land temperatures. From the weathernetwork.com, Canada's far north just saw its hottest temperatures ever recorded. Earth just endured a week of the hottest overall global temperatures ever recorded. What will it take to hit home for some that claim to be fighting climate engineering while actually helping to hide it and discrediting the entire subject in the process? Consider this quote from Just Merlot. He said, just as the technological advances of the modern world have refined and perfected the weapons of physical warfare, so the advance in man's understanding of the manipulation of public opinion have enabled him to refine and perfect the weapons of psychological warfare. Totalitarian psychological warfare is an effort to propagandize and hypnotize the world into submission. The controllers want us to believe and accept that to disagree with their narratives and dictates is somehow an act of disloyalty to the country, even the human race. But in the words of Edward Moreau, quote, we must not confuse dissent with disloyalty. We must remember always that accusation is not proof, that conviction depends upon evidence and due process of law. We must not walk in fear of one another. We must not be driven by fear into an age of unreason. If we dig deep in our history, our doctrine, and remember that we are not descended from fearful men, not from men who feared to write, to speak, to associate, to defend causes that were, for the moment, unpopular. The former paradigm is over. It's not coming back. It was never sustainable. How much clearer can that be at this point? 
How can it have been possible to loot, plunder, pillage, and pollute the planet indefinitely in the delusional attempt to fuel perpetual expansion on a finite planet with finite resources? The only chance we have of salvaging any part of the planet's remaining life support systems is by collectively standing against the gathering storm of insanity, no matter what comes. It's not just the power structure that has brought us to this dark corner we now find ourselves in. The controllers couldn't do what they do without the active or passive support of the majority population. This must change now, or it will very soon be game over. Unshakable solace exists in facing the unfolding storm head on, with unyielding resolve. No one can take our will, ever. We must prioritize the greatest and most immediate existential threats we face. Climate intervention operations should be, must be, at the top of that list. Check the activist suggestions link on the homepage of geoengineeringwatch.org to learn more about how you can help to turn this tide. Share credible data from a credible source. Make your voice heard. Make every day count. Until next week, stay strong. Never yield to the insanity that surrounds us, ever. This is Dane Wigington from geoengineeringwatch.org. <laughs>